Hey guys and welcome to another crafting video. This is the fourth part yeah. of our spell book making series. So if you have jumped into this, you need to go look at some other videos, including number one, how to make an antique map or your antique pages. Then number two, how to bind your pages together. Number three, uh, is how to put those bound books into a cover. And this is part four, which is how to decorate your cover with embellishments. Um, links to that are all in the video description below. Um, today, so we're on the final part of how to make a spell book slash beautiful journal slash dungeon and dragons guide. Um, below me is... Uh, Becky's illustration of what she wants to create, so what she wants the final spell book uh, to look like. Um, and also in this, we'll be talking a little bit about electronics. First question, do they work? Oh Christ, after like... <laughs> what a way to start. <laughs> uh. <laughs> uh. Well, after last week and this going so badly wrong and not working, I literally, I wired it up this morning and everything worked absolutely straight away. Brilliantly. <laughs> so, I mean, what materials might be needed? It's sort of down to what you want your book to look like and what you've got at home. So I've like raided my cupboards and all sorts. So I've got um, some pieces of leather that are gonna be like the straps around the book, um, but you could use anything, any sort of fabric. You could use paper, uh, you could paint them on, you could use string. Um, I've got some nice uh, velvet that I'm gonna uh, put over. I made these clouds today. I'm really happy Ooh. with these. I made these clouds out of warbler. Wow. Um, Cause I'm doing, so I'm doing a warbler course this week. Um, oh. Online, on Zoom, it's really fun. Um, but this is, yeah, so I made some warbler clouds, bought myself a heat gun the other day, it's great. Nice. Um, and I'm gonna just sort of, you know, create these three dimensional fabric uh, clouds, which will be fun got some leather strips for my edging uh i've got some where are my foam corners got some foam corners that are gonna mount on there and look pretty mm -hmm. uh, and my books not there you go enough. there we go i'm getting better at this um so some foam corners i've got what else do i have i've got some crystals i've got some sparkly bits i've just literally gone around my house and gone what have I got that I can stick on a book that will look cool? Okay. Um, you could make you could make embellishments out of card. You could make embellishments out of foam. You could make embellishments out of fabric. You could leave your book just covered if you want to. Like this is very customizable. So, mm -hmm. and you know we've said like these are kind of we're kind of doing lockdown ish crafts. So yeah, there's nothing specific you have to buy. It's just what do you want your book to look like? What have you got in the house? Yeah. And um, if you're going to put electronics in, put it in before you glue your back cover down. Do it before you cover the book and uh, check all your connections and that they work. Although you may just need to walk away from them for a yeah. week. Yeah, brilliant. So what are we doing next? What's the next step? So we've got, we've got all the way from our antique map to our bound pages to our covered pages. What's next? Her, just make it pretty. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, so if we want to talk about electronics a bit just quickly, this is a flickering LED. It comes pre-wired with a resistor that causes a slight flicker. I really like them because they look really uh, realistic and natural. So I'm going to have mine shining through a crystal and the crystal will glow, but it, it won't pulse, it won't be solid. It will kind of just have a little flicker to it, which I think that looks more magical than kind yeah. of a solid light. Yeah. Um, so those come pre-wired, I just bought like a bunch of 10 on eBay for like a couple of quid. Um, I've had these for ages. Uh, this is, it's not technically a lily pad, but it's a knockoff lily pad. Um, so lily pad make these like tiny little, they're coin cell battery holders with a switch. So they're really great for putting in like wearable jewelry or small things. Um, yeah. Uh, and, um, yeah, these are knockoff ones that I think I bought about 10 of them for like four quid off Amazon. Uh, and uh, yeah, just holds a coin, a coin cell battery and uh, has an on and off switch and points for two LEDs. So that's just some useful bits I've used. So these are just like simple things that you can just buy 
anywhere, yeah, right? They're not like crazy no, rare, like dragon tears. <laughs> <laughs> These are really easy, really quick to like, really easily available to find and to buy for cheap. And like, I bought a bunch of these and I haven't used them all, but it means whenever I've got a project, I'm like, ah, I've got a battery, I've yeah. got an LED. Okay. It's, um, because to a scrub uh, like me, I look at that and I'm like, oh, where do you get this wonderful thing? Um, but also, uh, Kishi Mikaze, how long does a battery like that last when powering LEDs? Um, I found they're pretty good because like coin cell batteries power watches. Um, it depends how long you leave it on for, but I, I am really one of those people who like forgets that life needs batteries because <laughs> batteries seem to last forever about around me. So I don't know if I've got some sort of magnetic yeah. field that like restores batteries. That's your weird secret power. <laughs> <laughs> but I like, I, I put batteries in all sorts of things. Like my, my robot monster child puppet, he's, yeah. he's got like very similar setup and he's been running for a couple of years now and i mean i don't have him on all the time but he's he's been running for quite a few years and yeah so uh, ace of thorns yeah. also suggests in chat you could grab that kind of led out of battery powered tea light oh massively yeah um so well, you could if even you mount go... that on the cover really couldn't you so because it kind of looks similar to the circular thing that you've got there already I, I like so yeah you could or you could make a really thick like book cover out of loads of layers of car uh, yeah. cardboard and embed it you could yeah yeah you could have a lot of fun the kind of spell um, book you could murder someone with uh lord of lime says what kind of battery are you using did you answer that it just it's a coin cell battery and it is a it's a three volt so this doesn't take you know these little leds don't take much power the flickering kind of these are tiny ones because i was originally planning these for inside jewelry um so they're 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 miniature coin cell is what a, 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 you know if you're trying to so it's c-o-i-n-s-e-l uh c-e-l-l -L. so it's a coin cell, cell like a a prison cell yeah, yeah i was going for biology but sure you want to make it dark you make it dark <laughs> And the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to secure the uh, electronics and this mount that is going to allow for my flickering crystal on the front of my book. Um, but yeah, so well, I'm just going to glue this light right in the center so it doesn't ping out and so there's no excess wires hanging about the place. But I'm, I need to hold it in position, but glue guns are hot, so I'm holding it with the cocktail stick uh, so I can just um, glue this down. And glue guns are great for gluing in electronics into place because the glue still uh, kind of insulates things. So it acts as like extra wrapping on the wires and will kind of conduct within, but insulate without, if that makes sense. Okay, okay. there you go, you glued a light. Glued a light and, and a crystal. And I'm just gonna glue this lovely bit onto the front of my book because doesn't that look beautiful? There's gonna be a lot of gluing today. Um, so feel free to chat away. Um, but yeah, it's uh, uh, what I need to do is sort of get that. What I should have done is glue the crystal afterwards so I could see where the crystal was going. But I wanted to get the glue on the back. So swing some roundabouts, you know. Um, mm. Maybe I'll just turn it on and then I'll be able to see if the light's coming through. I mean, look at that. It already looks great. Can you hold it up to the camera? So Because at the moment, yeah, it's blown out. So I can't really can't quite see the, see the glowing. Yeah, I unfortunately can't. Build it from there. Can I? Is that just oh ooh, yeah hold yourself there oh that's nice that nice though yeah we so, can yeah, see that it, yes there we go it flickers in and out which i i, I just i think that's beautiful mm -hmm. i just i think there's a naturalness to that kind of flicker that just you don't get from a solid light like i really love flickering leds they're one of my favorite uh favorite Why things to use was your plastic smoking just then Look, the glue gun, glue guns sometimes smoke and it's more to do with like hot glue melting. Like you are technically overly melting something. I'm here. not accusing you of nothing. I'm just saying for the novices out there who might be quite alarmed as to why there is smoke coming up from your glue gun. What is that? Um, yeah, glue guns. So, I mean, they're melting like glue. The glue that's in there is kind of our plasticky based glue. So like you're melting plastic essentially with a glue gun like yeah. it's a glue comp composite but Compost. um there is going to be some smoke sometimes yeah don't breathe it in kishimikaze says don't sniff glue gun don't sniff glue gun like 
glue guns are pretty like the glue is non-toxic like so you're all good but yeah you don't need to work in um you don't need to work in a mask with a glue gun yes windows open is good if you've got a little desk fan like they're great for um uh what's the thing great for ventilation soldering. soldering yeah a lot of people have one for soldering because that is a bit toxic um but yeah, don't sniff glue, don't breathe in glue stuff. You know, just use your, I'd say use your common sense. I cut through my fingers with scissors the other day, so. Yeah, <laughs> GG. Um, um, right, so one of the things that I really wanted to, uh, want to do is do like an edge around my thing. Um, and in order to do that with my wire here, I sort of need to feed this through this. Okay. That. Very quickly before you do that, what is the leather thing? What what? How did you achieve that in that form? In life. <laughs> how, in how, life. how is leather made? No. Um. How, how, what what is that's, it? That's another conversation. <laughs> um. So this is just this is some scraps of leather. It's beautiful. It's actually the other side of that leather. So the inside. Oh is yeah. Um. Uh, and I wanted to have both sides because this is the last of this leather and I think it's beautiful. Um, so leather, in order to get a fold in leather, you have to dampen it and then clamp it. So a spray bottle, this is an old um, hairspray bottle, like hair mousse stuff bottle that I've put filled with water. This is my craft spray bottle now. Um, spray your leather with water, fold it in half, Clamp it. I used my tiny bulldog clips because they're all I've got. Clamp it within something. So clamp it in like a scrap of fabric so that it's, you don't damage the leather with the clamps and then leave it until it's completely dry. So like I put mine, I clamped mine for about an hour and then I put them under a heavy book. Okay. Create that kind of corner. And you could try and fold it around and glue it. But if it's already like that, it's just going to make the gluing so much easier and it will hold so much better. So I've done it that way. Um, so what I need to do is I need to create a, a cut at the centre of this leather to slide that through. Otherwise, if I try and glue it over, could I glue it over and hide some of the wire? Actually, I probably could glue it over and hide the wire. What do we reckon, Chucks? That might be better. Where, where is the lily pad going once that's glued? Is that being hidden ah. in the, um, the, the, the oh. ribbon brain word fart? <laughs> Yes, it will be, although it's just come un unstuck, unwired, so give me a second. Perfect, obviously going to happen when you really need it to, um, so yeah. I'm going to glue my lily pad down, just so I've done a position here just to check where it needs to be. I've decided that yes, this is going to go on afterwards and cover the wires and that will be fine. But I'm going to do this now so that I can demonstrate how I'm going to cover it and hide it. Okay. But it's going to be stuck to the front of my book, which I know this this is like the bit where we make the book look worse before it looks better. <laughs> <laughs> you know, that important pro part of any process. Is there anything to consider when you're gluing like electronics or metal? Uh... No. <laughs> um, that the rubber wires around the, like the rubber around the outside of the wire, the plastic bits will melt. Okay. If too much heat is applied. Yeah. Um, but like gluing the back of a lily pad, that's just plastic. Like all the internals are on this side. So that's why I'm gluing the back down. Um, also this means that the switch is exposed and I can replace the battery. Okay. Yeah. Um, Cause that's something that is, I, I know it sounds dumb, but it's one of those things, right? Where you probably should consider you're going to need to be able to access this to change the battery at a future point. Like even if it's like yeah. 10 years in the future or something. Yeah, so this, like, actually designing, like, how this was going to fit on the book uh, so that I could change the battery and could switch it on took me a little bit of time, um, but it was all worth it. So this is my little cover for my battery pack. What did also, you make that out of? That's another scrap of leather. That's cool. just some nice leather that I had. Um, I don't even remember where this came from. I tend to buy a lot of offcuts on eBay. Yeah. Again, sustainability, like... You know, I eat meat, I'm a meat eater, so I'm not anti-leather, but I do think that it's a lot better, like, buying things that are off-cuts and leftovers yeah. than creating new things in the world. Yeah. Like, that's yeah. always a better way to go. Um, this is a magnet. I'm going to use... So these are some little craft magnets. I'm going to use these to create the closure for my book. Oh. Um, 
So actually what's great is that the magnet kind of magnetizes to the um, to the battery cover very well. Yeah, I was going to say. <laughs> um, but what I'm going to do is I am going to put a tiny bit of glue on it just to hold it there so that when like yeah. the clasp is coming in, it's not like breaking pull, it on the magnet. pull it out. Yeah. 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 So um, where did you get these? Like what, what did you liberate these from? So my mum used to make a lot of fine mode jewellery stuff and I sort of got a box of stuff from her and uh, these like she used to make little fridge magnets and things and okay. there was just this bag of magnets and they probably been hidden in a cupboard for about 20 years wow. <laughs> and I found them the other day I was doing a bit of a craft clear out and I found them and I was like Ooh. Yeah. I don't want to this yeah yeah so, but I'm guessing you could just get them like if you just look fridge magnets like google fridge magnet create yeah, craft or, or like something craft craft magnets like yeah. i'm sure you could find something and like this is just i happen to have magnets so i was like i'll make a magnet class yeah but you know you could make a, t a clasp that ties together you could actually buy a clasp mm. that's a go. thing that exists um Qu quick yeah. google self-adhesive craft magnets 100 uh that are 2.5 centimeter diameter three pounds there you go very easy get loads um or yeah liberate the magnets out of something else i mean people have talked about liberating things liberate stuff we like liberation <laughs> um so yeah that's gonna sit over there and enable me still to turn the switch on and off because it's soft and to push the battery in and out mm -hmm. but it will also mean that that magnetizes to it because the fabric's not too thick Ooh. Oh. oh yeah that's something to check as well check that your fabric is not too thick thick and juicy yeah like I could, I mean, do I want to? If I created a hole in that, actually the magnet would be stronger, whereas it's not that strong right now. Yeah, I could create a, create, cut a hole in that just to create, give the magnet a bit more breathing space. Um, so let's just, uh, where's the magnet roughly when that's kind of on there? So yeah, I'm really, I love eyeballing things. So we're just gonna put that there. I need to find my leather hole punch. That's gone missing. It's here. Is it? Yeah. Uh, is I'm it pretty sure. I'm pretty sure I've seen it in the garage. Yeah, probably because I was imagining that a lot of my kind of uh, cosplaying function might yeah. be constructed in your room, um, in your garage. So. In the garage. Uh, so sorry. Just using craft knife to cut out this hole for the magnet. Right. <sighs> so what are you doing now? So you've poked the hole through. I've poked the hole through, so I'm just going to glue glue this bit down, but I'm only going to glue three edges because this edge needs to stay open in order for the battery to slip in and out when I'm changing it. So the great thing about coin cell is just like, uh, about these coin cell lily pads is that just like pushing from one end, you can usually slide the battery out. Boom. So even under fabric, I'll be able to maneuver that out the way. Um, what am I going to use for this? Oh, I'm going to use some super glue. All the glues in this in this house right now, all the glues. Uh, don't sniff any of them. Don't be silly. Um, so that's glued down. That's lovely. Right. What are we going to do? Well, I suppose we should put some corners and edges on, shouldn't we? Um, now I've tried. Uh, so I've got loads of. Um, I bought loads of stuff. What's the word I want? Foam. Uh, leaf. Gold leaf, leaf. Gold, gold leaf. Oh, leaf. Okay, there we go. Gold and silver leaf for a project a couple of a while ago, and it was just like you know, it was like buy one sheet for ten quid or buy five hundred sheets for two pounds, and I was D like, okay, <laughs> I will buy all the sheets. So now I've got loads, and I'm like, I should try and use some of this up. So I am trying, and I did cover these with silver leaf this morning, and then give them a bit of a spray just to take the shine off. Um, that does mean gold silver leaf is probably just going to molt everywhere because it gets everywhere. If you breathe wrong while you're trying to do it, it just oh, your house is silver. <laughs> like I think once I sighed and like my silver leaf just went across the house, and I was like, right, great. Um, so with these, I have built these out of um, out of foam with a one millimeter foam, ten millimeter foam, one centimeter. <laughs> 10 millimeter on top and this is supposedly a five but i think it's thinner than a five mm. on the bottom um to just see already silver leaf everywhere if you want and uh it... basic bitch options could you just use tin foil tin foil tin foil yeah is uh, silver leaf in an emergency you could just you 
Uh, also, could uh. you slide your book up so you're clipping that on on camera? No, I'll wrong way. Do top, or do a top corner. I yeah. thought I'd do a top corner. Um, these. So you could also do these kind of embellishments out of um, cardboard. Um, okay. Like, you know, just make sure that you've got a space in between to slip onto your corner or build them on top of your book. Like, you don't need to build like fancy corners that slide on. You could build, uh, you know, you could just glue one piece of card that side and one piece of card that side. The idea with these was that I could do. Sorry, can really you show quickly. the inside cover again? That was off camera. So yeah, what, what uh, is that? That was more for me. What is that clipping over though? So that's literally slipped over the corner of the book. Right. So that, that page that you've got your map on is is glued to the cover. Yeah. So that's the end page, which yep. is why it's like got that, you know, glue, okay. glue, glue, glue. Shouldn't um, you be so... putting your leather edges on before you put the clips on? So I think because the leather edges are going to create quite a bit of bulk. So mm -hmm. I think I'm going to put these on afterwards and I'm going to glue them beneath. Okay. So I'll cut them down. Um, Rather than and gluing them on and then clipping over it. Right. Okay. Yeah, I think clipping over them, like, I don't think there's enough clearance within these corners to yeah, actually do it. that. Yeah, pulling it over. Um, and it will end up really stressing everything a lot. Oh, God. This just. <laughs> uh, I'm going to have to go back into these corners and do a bit of work on them because they're. <laughs> um, What's wrong with so... them? So. Uh, they're, I'm, they're not up to par for me. Okay. They're not up to your standards. <laughs> There's nothing wrong with them. There's nothing technically yeah. wrong. Push it up on the camera. I can't see what you're doing. There you go. There you go. That's perfect. Right there. Um, we got a question from Lord of Lime. Could you maybe lacquer the silver leaf to seal it in? Yeah, absolutely. I just haven't had time yet. So um, you could use like clear nail varnish or something? Yeah. Clear nail varnish. Uh, PVA. PVA. Jinx. White glue. See, I'm learning. I'm learning though, Becky. Look, I'm learning things. Yeah, if you jinx me on stream, it becomes really boring a stream. <laughs> Fine, I'll release you. <laughs> I mean, I talked already. <laughs> I feel like I'm bad at this. Um, yeah, and those are just going to kind of... See, that one's gone a bit scrappy. See what I mean? A bit scrappy. Mm. Fun. Uh, we've got another question. Are you going to... So, kind of two-part two, two part question, really. Um, I just want to ask these while you're fiddling with corners. One, yeah. are you going to glue the corners on? And two, are the, the are those things bendy enough for the ones that go over the spine of the book? We're coming to that. <laughs> okay. Um, so, these, are the, these ones are the ones I've created for the inside corners so for these corners i've created these which don't have a back so uh, let me grab a back one so like these ones are the outside corners they have a back all the way around these ones are the inner corner they only have a back at the base these ones will need to be glued okay because they can't have an outside back because you've got the spine in the way if, if you have an outside back i really i did actually make them all with outside backs and then i tried to slide them on and i was like oh wait oh, 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 oh yeah yeah yeah, I need to be able to open um, this book. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it's quite useful. Um, so yeah, I'm going to glue these in. And the trick here is to not glue them in onto the spine. So you'll be able to see your spine ridge and that dip of fabric that we left. As long as they only overlap onto the dip of fabric and don't touch the spine, that will still give you the flexibility of, that your book needs. I've created some bits that I'm not, I mean I need to go in and repaint these and I think probably resize these I don't think I think they're too wide for the spine actually but these are out of the thinner foam and these will be like over the spine and those okay. will retain the full flexibility they look all like, right. they look they're right just side. a bit wide because they right. don't they can't go anywhere over the spine otherwise right. the bend won't work so they really need to be that width maximum so you just need to shave the sides off a little bit i just need to shave the sides off and make those a bit thinner um but i i'm not gluing these ones down just because they sit on and sit really snugly so that's just a i really don't need to i am going to glue these ones on because of course they don't have a back so they won't stay unless they're glued trusty glue gun are you going to glue the corners on so i haven't glued those ones i'm gluing this one okay i'm, I'm doing it right now why 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 haven't you glued <laughs> why? The why haven't you glued the other ones i guess because they clip on right so they... yeah mainly because they just stick the sit there so they don't need to glue they're really secure as they are um and if so uh adam savage again um uh says uh, like 
don't glue if you can avoid it like if there's something that will sit flush or you can screw it because it means if you need to make any repairs you can take it off like once it's glued it's there for good so you really have to know that you want these things to stay right. um like you know these are probably these are the outer corners so these are probably going to get the most damage and the most wear so actually not gluing them means i'll be able to take them off and redo Repair things them, with right. them yeah so actually having you know i did try and do that with these with kind of creating a slot up that side and opening it but they just didn't slide on nicely so yeah. it didn't really work um so that's yeah if, if anything ever stays in place without you gluing it and is secure do it because it allows you flexibility in the future yeah. i'm just going to do the the front for the moment i'm not actually going to do the back and it's mainly just because while i'm you know working it will be easier to just be working on the front um kind of just for the sake of the stream but of course i've got pieces for the back and i will go in and put them on in the end what about the edging i just feel like you briefly mentioned the edging and then you walked away from it and i'm just like what? you want me to do the edging what is the conclusion to this <laughs> okay so we're going to be cutting these down so that they fit within these so there's a bit of measuring involved i'm not on camera am i no we're going to be cutting these down so that they fit in between the corners nicely um so i'm gonna do a bit of measuring we've got a question from leos that's actually relevant to what we're doing you're doing <laughs> um and it says shouldn't the edges be painted so we don't see the white bit what white bit um on the edge of the the blue leather I'm, I'm not too bothered by it. <laughs> um, if you've got a burnishing tool, if you're a leather burnisher, oh. um, then you could burnish that edge really nicely. Yeah. I don't mind little bits like that because I think that's part of what comes out of like using real leather. It's like if you yeah. were wrapping a book in real leather, you'd get a little bit of an edge there. Yeah. So I'm sort of, you know, little bits like that i think make it feel a bit more organic but also feel free to ignore yeah, me do what you want um i also i have this i've talked about this stuff before um this uh, relief outliner um that um is designed i'm gonna hold it the right that, way up yeah there you go yeah you being upside down um relief outliner is designed for people who make fake stained glass windows yeah because you used it on the tardis the lead. yeah i used the tardis um, but this, I will probably go over at the end and maybe do a lot of details and edges with the silver just to tie in with the silver edges so I could actually edge along the, the leather with this. Um, so yeah, this is basically my hide all ills kind of Yeah, so you trick. could do something like that. Um, I'm, I'm just... just, I'm just gluing edges so i'm just doing what i said i would with the glue gun in the middle and super gluing the edge and you can see how nicely that's turning out yeah there. it sits really so nicely I'm, yeah uh, just gonna work around and do the other edges like that okay you got any tips for tucking in the end um i've 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 cut this to match the curve okay. so this is not tucked in this is literally cut to match okay cool so. Uh, Soylent Green says, can I cheat and ask how you're going to discolour the cover of the book? Bleach? Um, so I guess because in the illustration that Becky has made below me, the, the cover does look quite weathered. Are, are you going to do that or is that just artistic interpretation? I'll admit that was actually more to do with uh, me painting very quickly <laughs> than anything else. But I might, I mean, like I could go in with, I've got some, have I got any here? Oh, yes. So uh, these are some fun paints. Uh can everyone see Upside that? Down. I've gotten used to the old way now. Yeah. <laughs> uh, these are called Dynaflow. They're by a company called Jacquard. And they act like uh, they're liquid. So they're really liquidy. They're like, they're almost like watercolor when they've got water in or like airbrush paints. It's probably the consistency of an airbrush paint. Um, and these work on, um, these are fabric paints, but they you use them like watercolors. These are phenomenal. Mm. Um, these are really exciting. I bought, a, I was doing work about 
seven years ago now? Oh my god, time. <laughs> <laughs> I, I was like, it was probably just last year. Oh, it was seven years ago. Um, so yeah, these are really good. And these like, they look like watercolors. They blend like watercolors. And so I might go in with some of these. I've got a black one somewhere and do some weathering and aging on the fabric. Um, yeah. I don't know yet. I haven't thought massively about weathering and it's probably something that will happen off screen and I'll then post a picture of the finished book just for time because you can spend hours weathering. That's like a whole tutorial in itself. If anyone's interested in that, we'll do a weathering day at some point. <laughs> right, so these are, I've designed this look for my book where, with look for my book, um, with a kind of compass uh, because I love compasses. I have a, uh, this is my tattoo which is oh. a dragon on a compass which you know is about the most me thing I've ever had done <laughs> um I love compasses so I de designed this compass rose look for the book and I made these little compass rose spikes points points, points yeah out of uh, thin foam and just spray painted them and glue gunned them and I'm just now glue gunning them into place that's literally all that's happening right now but it's, it's, it's fun so that's I'm just gonna glue gun those I'm literally eyeballing this. This is so scruffy. It's not scruffy. It's 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 handmade. Yeah, <laughs> it's loved. It's well loved. Like, I do think if you're making things that, like, if you're making things like dragon eggs, I sort of sometimes I want them to look a bit perfect because they're like a you know mystical a nature thing. Yeah. But if you're making something that, if it existed, like a magic book, would have been handmade, then it's okay if it looks handmade. Yeah. Yeah. Like exactly. That's kind of part of the the style and the look like yeah. don't don't be afraid of a rough handmade look that's definitely yeah part of part of things and just because we've done a massive uh, jump cut hey youtube um how did the edging go it looks beautiful i think doesn't it yeah i think it looks good <laughs> So it's pretty good. It's all, you know, sort of glued down inside. I'll probably put some little silver bits just here shove to join it, them shove up. Shove the book up. Shove the book up. There you go. So I'll probably just, you know, silver strips along here just to join in that gap so that you don't shove have it the up corners a bit more. on. There we go. There we go. <laughs> so what that's... happened here is my camera is too small for my book. Next yeah. craft needs to be a small it's craft. Giant. Um, so where 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 the corner is, the metal the metal corner is. Um, you're going to put some more silver in there. Yeah, just on that spine bit because that's not going to have the inner bits. So I just might do a silver strip along the inside there just to join it all together and cool. make it all. But also, like, it's not going to continue on the side. So I'll just kind of do a nice frilly curve that disappears yeah. out. Or something. I'll do something there, I'm sure. Yeah. Okay. Um, uh, so yeah. what's next? Is it just a gluing, gluing all the front accoutrements? Yeah, we're, it's a lot of gluing today, um, but we're, you know, there's some fun things that we're going to... Yeah. So what kind of together. what kind of ideas could people have for those who maybe aren't confident with foam or, you know, if we're going back to the random crap I have around my house, what kind of ideas could we suggest? I, 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 go, I keep going back to lentils and, like, yeah, beans. Yeah, bunch and, of lentils. Yeah, that you can paint and colour to look like scales. Uh, scale, yeah, I mean, if you go back to the dragon egg tutorial, you could you could cover it with drawing tins and make a full like scale cover mm, if you wanted yeah. to um or cover it with foam shapes or cover it with lentils we've seen a lovely um lovely dragon made out of lentils uh you could cover it with googly eyes book of eyes yes Go book of eyes bit of googly eyes you know if you had um you could cover the boards with clay and then like press like space Ooh. like bubble into them so if you wanted to cover it with clay paper clay would work really well for this paper clay and then like push the eyes into it you can yes. get real like you can get a proper book of eyes oh so. or like even if you like use marbles or like crystals yeah. like gems oh my god like tiger's eye and jasper yeah things that you have around your house i mean i have them around my house because when i was a kid i used to collect rocks and like Same. i have i have like yeah. a whole drawer of crystals yep. which Same. is where all these have come from <laughs> so yeah, literally. What have you got around the house? And buttons. Like, buttons. Oh, button book would be fun. Like, you could yeah. do a button eye with a smile. You could do a kind of Coraline style book. Amiibos. Get get your Amiibos and just shove them in there. Fucking yeah. Um, you could... Uh, what else could you... Like, there's... What have you got and what can you imagine? Like, I really kind of forward to seeing where you guys go yeah, with yeah, this. Yeah. Some of the things that 
you know, people have made from some of our other tutorials. And the Discord is going crazy. Like, the Discord art and craft oh, oh. Right, can you tell me about these clouds you've made? So these clouds, these clouds are made, sorry, I'm just laying things out. So I'm just, like, working things out before I start, you know, gluing stuff again. So these clouds I've made are made out of warbler. <sighs> I love warbler. I especially love warbler now I've bought a heat gun. Because <laughs> I... <laughs> And creating organic shapes like that is really easy. But so just getting a bit of curve out the clouds um, was really simple. I just cut these this morning and then just heated them and kind of I used one of my clay tools that I never use. The, these ones, which are for smoothing, um, I used to just kind of push into the back of the warbler and create these kind of bubbled three dimensional mm. cloud shapes. Um, so for those of us who are idiots, what the hell is warbler? Warbler is a thermoplastic, so it is a plastic that can be uh, manipulated with heat. Mm -hmm. So Warbler <laughs> is, it's magic, like this is absolute magic. I, I, like, I was thinking about this yesterday, um, I sh we should do a Warbler tutorial okay. at some point, like, yeah. uh, and we should make something out of Warbler because it's, it will just blow your mind. And if you're someone who likes to sculpt in clay or things, this stuff. And how how expensive is it for someone who maybe is a bit entry level? Like... So it's like I've just ordered a he I've just ordered a one meter by like seventy five centimeters sheet, and that is about uh, twenty five quid. There's a company called Coscraft here in the UK that do like the cheapest. Um, cheapest ones in the UK um I like I got an A3 sheet from um Amazon for like 12 quid okay uh, kind of when I was starting but the great thing is about um Warbler is that absolutely none of it is wasted yeah so there is no wastage so all of this is my jar of offcuts um and every little like even like tiny bits like that could be reused because you can heat it and basically mold Stick it together it. and use it like clay. So uh, the warbler has been used to make your fluffy little clouds, um, which what? you're going to glue on. You're gluing them on with the contact adhesive there, the old fun. Yeah. I can recognize that tin and I recognize that grumpy look on your face. Um, if people wanted to create something similar to what you've made with the clouds, but mm -hmm. don't want to get into warbler, I'm thinking like maybe plasticine or... Um... Yeah, clay or like card. My early templates of this, I made them out of foam and I just kind of sanded them. You could make them out of wood. You could like any bits that you're kind of sticking on. You're just creating depth. Like you're just, depth is a good thing. So yeah. like you could do clay embellishments. You could do card embellishments. Yeah. Blue tack. So <laughs> Blue tack, yeah, blue tack doesn't stay stays nah, tacky, so yeah, if yeah. you squished it, it would go away. Does it? Because, um, like, all of mine just still falls off the wall. Yeah. Um, <laughs> but it'll fall off your book, then. Yeah. Uh, cotton balls? Oh, wait, you're about gluing. Yeah. yeah. Um, I opened the contacts and then tried to put some on and immediately decided I hated it, so I've gone back to super glue. Right. Fair enough. Um, Look, always one be, day I'll get to grips with always, contact cement. Always be uh, flexible, always be malleable. So yeah, I'm just gluing this on and then I'm going to cut around the edge once it's glued. Uh, I am using my fabric uh, un... Uh, mm, what's the word? Inefficiently. Um, because I'm going on a diagonal. So those who work in fabric will know that cutting on the bias, cutting diagonally, is a thing you do so that you basically... It's, it's like how on wood you cut with the grain so that you don't split the wood on in fabric cutting you cut diagonally across the grain so that the threads don't fray right and so you don't see those lines so like if you look at this fabric you'll see quite strong lines across it that way mm -hmm. um so i'm going diagonally so that those lines are kind of random across my uh across my thing <laughs> across my clouds so they're not yeah. like obvious and there um yeah yeah makes sense right i think i missed the first part of it what are you you're gluing it on the back of your clouds so there's my cloud i'm gl gluing it on top of my cloud oh, the front of your cloud ah okay yeah. so you make ah so okay when i right. cut it out you'll get that that depth and that shape right but no, you'll i have thought the look of this fabric right because i thought yeah you were just keeping them as the dark gray um oh, i'm gonna make them really I'm gonna gotcha make them i'm with you sorry i missed the bit i thought you were gluing it applying the glue to glue it onto the book like 
I'm with no, you. No, I'm applying the glue to make the clouds really pretty because nice. I'm just that mad. Nice. Cut out, I've glued the clouds to the warbler, I've cut out the cloud shapes and I'm just glue gunning them onto the cover. So they've, they've got this lovely three dimensional and what I might do later is like outline them with my um, uh, relief, uh, relief outliner just to, you know, give the real kind of, give them real definition because I think they're a bit, they're a bit wishy-washy on the edges. So I want to kind of add in some detail with my outliner later, but I'm just gluing them down. And then I think we'll do our straps as a kind of, getting to the final getting towards the end yeah making it look like it does in the picture yeah okay um any tips or tricks or any hot info or glue guns are hot yeah okay <laughs> <laughs> um glue guns are hot warbler does bend a bit under heat i mean a glue gun is not hot enough it's nowhere near as hot as a heat gun like um but just like if you press too hard on your warbler you will be able to warp your warbler mm. uh, so just be careful when you're pressing down when you've used like a hot glue to glue it and i've used a hot glue gun rather than super glue to kind of make sure the shapes stay and give it that lift while still gluing it down okay uh king shimikaze says shouldn't you do the smaller arrows first yeah so the smaller arrows I don't happening. know how I'm going to do them. I looked about doing them with foam and they just didn't look right. So I'm not happy with them. So I might go back in with relief outliner. I might go in with paint. I don't know yet about the smaller arrows. So my brain just had to kind of, you know, abandon those for now. So something that I'm going to do now is these are my straps that I had for the, the sides. And I'm just going to check the si size of those because I think they might be too long and I think they might start overlapping the clouds and or I need to put them up. So I'm just going to check how those will fit. Because yeah, what I want to do is take that over the... Yeah, those can go quite a bit shorter. So actually, I want to... There. A couple of things. I'm going to put in some drawing pins into my straps because drawing pins look exactly like rivets when they're pushed into things. Yeah. So I will uh, glue, glue gun these when my glue gun has heated up. But just to show you, you can... Push that through. Already, it looks amazing. Like, yeah, it's a, a lovely really little, cool. uh, lovely little rivet going on there. Yeah. And um, what's you go? I was going to say, what's nice is that's where I glued my leather. So there's actually a couple of layers yeah. there. So there's plenty of space for the rivets to go in and not to damage any of the book. And what you're going to glue gun that as well, or? Um, I might not now because those went in a lot more yeah. sturdily than I was expecting those to wobble about a bit, but they seem pretty, yeah, they seem pretty happy there. Yeah. So I want to create this this clasp, which requires a magnet. I've lost my magnet that was out and about, and so I'm going to uh... get another magnet. But I wanted to use this crystal, uh, crystal wand, I believe these are called mm. sometimes, um, as the closure for my book, so that you pull that out and then you open it. So we've got our nice little ribbon left here. As our as our closure, I'm gonna leave a bit of an end because that end will uh, rivet in the other side. But of course, I haven't done any of the leather edging and details, so I just need to kind of guess roughly how much I want to go onto the other side, which is about. Uh, if you're doing this, by the way, draw marks and lines on the inside of your leather, not the outside. Of the <laughs> so bits that you're gonna stick down, you can put leather on those, uh, put put like marker lines on those bits, and then it's when you then glue it in. So that's just like the amount that will be sat on the other side just so I can kind of work it out. Okay. So what I want to do with this is I want to wrap these around the crystal and then oh. attach my magnet on the back. Okay, yeah, so, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. How you this now? It's going to be exciting. So what things I will need to do is Probably cut a hole in my leather again to sit the magnet in it nice and flush. Uh, make sure the magnet's the right way around because magnets don't connect wrong side to wrong side. Like they've got to connect. <laughs> negative to negative. negative. Yeah, negative to positive. Yeah, yeah like Classic. That, that doesn't do anything. That does. So don't glue your magnet in the wrong way around <laughs> um, or you will have problems. Right, so I think what we're actually going to do. I've lost my marker line. Brilliant. <laughs> I literally just drew that. There we go. Um, 
So first off, I'm just going to kind of put some glue on the middle of this and attach it to my ribbon and then I don't have to keep it tucked under the book while, you know, I can play around with it a bit more without uh, it moving positions. So this is more, you know, because I'm not doing the back yet. This is not a crucial step. This is just me rushing through on stream. <laughs> Classic. Um, so yeah, that's now where that needs to be positioned in order to go the other side. So that's good to know. So I can now mess with it. Okay. Um, so actually what we're going to need to do is what we need to do is we need this to, you know, fall in the same place, fall in the right place. So I'm just basically judging how tight I need to put this around the crystal mm -hmm. in order to work out, you know, what excess I can cut off and things. Yeah. Um, so that I can, you know, play around a bit because we love playing around. Um, um, and also where I'll need to cut out the hole for the magnet, because that's very important. Hey, look at the thing I made. That looks freaking amazing. I love that. Uh, that crystal detail has really just like made it pop. Made it made pop. Made it pop. Yeah. So, yeah, that's probably where I guess I'm leaving it today. Yep. Um, there'll be lots of, you know, pinning and weathering and detailing and stuff. The final one, you know, I'll show it off in a future stream and uh, on my Instagram and things. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. are we going to do any more on this or is this is this it? This is, um, I mean, where do, where do you stop? Like... I think this is it for streams because I feel like a lot of the rest of it, like I might leave the final finishing until I've kind of done a lot of the stuff inside because Shut for my book, bit. there's because yeah, because I want to put all these electronics and things. I should turn on the light, shouldn't I? Uh, yeah, so, turn the light on. Oh yeah. Um, so yeah, because I want to do a lot of the stuff inside, I might like faff with all of that before I kind of finish the outside. Yeah. So that I'm kind of, you know, I've got that to play with um and that's going to take a bit of time and stuff so yeah i might the finishing of the outside might be a while for me uh so i think for streams on this book i feel like we might be done okay well i think it's a great place to stop um and also i think we've shown kind of dry brushing and weathering in previous streams if you look at the mm. tardis stream um there's a bit of weathering um if you check the video descriptions there's timestamps in there so just look for the word weathering and dry brushing um so you'll be able to find those um kind of uh what's the word uh techniques in there to bring to this um but yeah and we'll so do, we can do some more we can do some you know techniques and do like a we could do a proper weathering tutorial and do a lot of things like i mean if you're ever doing weathering like fabric and things, you can get a cheese grater out. You can, uh, we can talk about dirty down. You can have all sorts of fun. Um, yeah. So, yeah. Um, what was I going to say? Brain. If you guys uh, have made books, if you, if you, even, even if it's not like to this point, if you've just made a, a simple journal or a book or anything like that, send it to us on Twitter uh, at NanoSounds or at Becky Pepperdine, um, or come join my Discord. Links are in the video description below. Um, there's an arts and crafts channel, and we'll show them off. Um, yeah, keep keep checking it out. Keep uh, following us for more arts and crafts. And thank you, Becky.